Tonight, a local female firefighter is speaking out over a proposed bill. The legislation would change the physical test requirements needed for women to become firefighters. NBC Connecticut's Brisada Landaverde joining us now in studio with the story. And Brisada, you actually spoke with this 13-year veteran who was against the bill. Yeah, well, Mike and Keisha, look, the longtime firefighter says that lowering the physical test standard could be a safety hazard for many people. But we also heard from supporters who believe this would give more women a chance to enter the field. In the fire service, everybody pulls their weight. Corey Kelly is a career firefighter. I know that I'm held to a standard, and then on top of it, I hold myself to a higher standard to make sure that I don't slip. Kelly's been on the job for over a decade and is concerned over newly proposed legislation that would lower the physical test requirements to become a firefighter for women, but not men. It's a huge safety liability. The whole point of having the national standard is having a bar that everybody has to leech. Currently, all candidates are required to wear a 50-pound vest during the test, which is supposed to mirror the experience of wearing heavy gear and an air tank while performing firefighter duties. The risk, Corey says, if someone does not have to meet these capabilities, will they be able to save lives? I can't change any of the weights of my civilians that I have to rescue. Five Democrats introduced the bill earlier this month. According to the language, the purpose is to allow for a more diverse class of candidates for firefighter positions by offering an alternative to the 50-pound vest test component. We know that there are not enough women involved in the fire service, and really the big barrier to getting into the fire academy is the candidate physical ability test. Hamden Mayor Lauren Garrett is pushing for the change. Women in town have been turned away because they didn't pass the required test. I'm looking at just taking a few pounds off of the backpacks that have to be worn, the, the weighted vests, um, so that we can get more women uh, to pass the CPAT test. And then, I, you know, not at all changing the standards within the Connecticut Fire Academy. 33-year-old Rebecca Wax just recently graduated from a fire academy and she will soon be part of the New York Fire Department. Now she is in the middle of a lot of controversy because she apparently did not pass the physical test necessary to pass in order to become a firefighter. However, uh, Bill de Blasio, according to the New York Post, has lowered the standards of firefighters so more women can get hired. So hey guys, welcome to Transmit the 1075. We are going to discuss the third rail of the fire service today. Um, so I just wanted to say this first before I get started, and I'm gonna to try to do this without blowing a head gasket, um, but I just wanted to say this first so that guys don't get themselves in trouble. Uh, we're obviously in a very woke time and a cancel culture world. So although I wanna discuss this topic uh, intellectually and, and uh, with a lot of thought. I also don't want guys commenting if you guys are on the job or thinking about getting on the job. Please don't say or do anything in the comments that might jeopardize your chances of doing that because that's the world that we live in. Um, free speech doesn't much exist any longer. So anyhow, here we go. Obviously, from the two videos that you've just seen, the one in New York City and one in Connecticut, there's this growing trend with this idea that if we make life easier for candidates to get hired, that somehow that makes the world a better place. So let's rehash a little bit of what you've already watched. Component. We know that there are not enough women involved in the fire service. and So Mayor Garrett, I believe it is, just so you understand, we don't need more women in the fire service. And I don't mean that to be derogatory. What I'm saying is we need competent, capable, physically fit, smart uh, first responders that can do the job. And if they happen to be women, or they happen to be black, or happen to be gay, or Jewish, or white, or Hispanic, or Muslim, or anything, that's perfectly fine. But what we shouldn't do is hand jobs over to people that don't deserve them and aren't capable of doing them. As a matter of fact, I give this woman uh, from Connecticut, the, this Connecticut firefighter who had, who had the uh, courage to speak out as a female uh, because her livelihood is being, is being wrecked here. 
uh, this idea of giving jobs away is actually ruining her credibility. That woman actually deserves to be a firefighter and earned her way. And if what happens, look, we, I've seen other videos where we claim, you know, and it is, it, the boys club, the firefighters, all, all these men, no women, okay? It is a boys club, without a doubt, okay? There's, a re there's reasons for that. There's evolutionary reasons for that and so forth. But be that as it may, we'll, I'll accept that it's a boys club. How do you get a woman into the fire service to be uh, respected and accepted by the men there? Do you think it's giving them a free job? Do you think it's hot, uh, holding them to a lower standard? Why on earth would any man in the fire service respect a female firefighter if they weren't capable of doing the job the way? Wh why would we even think that we're equal? You're, you're establishing that they're, we're not equal. You're saying that they can't do the job. And this woman, Kelly here, she's telling you flat out that, that that's wrong because guess what? She can do it and she is capable. If you believe in the philosophy of equality of outcomes, then you really shouldn't have watched the Grammys last Sunday. Because the Grammys, aside from the usual award show virtue signaling, are still largely about the idea that certain people do music better than others and it's okay to reward them for it. That's called meritocracy, and it's the opposite of guaranteed outcomes. Equality of outcomes, as opposed to equality of opportunity? We used to call that by another name, trophy syndrome. A world that was... <laughs> a world that was created back in the 90s where everybody, every kid gets a trophy, no matter how good or bad they are at something. Well, the result of that kind of thinking is that American kids now have a totally deluded and unearned belief in their charm, brains, and talent. In regards to equality, because I'm a, an advocate of equality of opportunity. But and I outcomes. Think the idea, outcomes. That's an appalling doctrine. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, because well, you have to produce an unbelievably potent bureauc bureaucracy to make the ever greater and ever finer distinctions that are necessary to enforce equality of outcome. How many group differences are you going to equalize across? Is it just gender and sex? How many genders? No, so gender and ethnicity? How many genders? I think How many what, ethnicities? What are... How many races? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this vest, this 50 pound vest. It was already mentioned, yes, the reason why every candidate has to wear this vest is because this represents what a firefighter wears at every single incident okay your turnout gear your helmet uh, a set of irons a hook a water can your air pack okay to to lessen uh the the qualifications to say we're going to reduce the 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 essentials that every single firefighter carries is ridiculous furthermore and this is to the young guys. I do a lot. I've been starting some videos here, talking to newer candidates, to, talking to younger firefighters. Just so you know, you're getting on the job. If you think carrying this 50 pound vest is the hard part of the fire service, this is just the everyday thing. The hard part is being in a building when you can't see and it's pitch black smoke conditions. The hard part is when it's hundreds, if not thousands degrees at the, at the ceiling level where you, and you can't see. Um, the hard part is thinking that you might fall through the floors or you could die or that someone is in desperate need and panic and bedlam is occurring. This is child's play. This is, this is firefighter 101. We teach every candidate this. This is nothing. As a matter of fact, we teach candidates this. Firefighters learn this. And then when they get to the real job, the real fire service, when they're not at the fire academy and they're actually doing the job, Sometimes we separate the men from the boys there and the women, okay? And sometimes firemen wind up not being able to handle it because the academy can only do so much and it is not real world, okay? We're, this isn't a joke, okay? Mayor Garrett, this isn't just a box to check off to get women in the fire service. When that bell goes off, there'll be, there could be a time where Mayor Garrett's um, son or husband or mother is in a building um, and needs to be rescued. Is this when you want to have your box checking off that you got uh, a candidate that's not capable of doing the job? We're, talk we're in the business of saving lives. This isn't some political thing on paper that you can check off and brag to your, to your voter constituency. Equality of outcome, it's impossible. 
if you pursue it, you end up with a dystopia. And even if it were possible, it would not be desirable for the reasons you point to about the benefits of what you're calling competition. And they, they make it sound as if this is not just logical, but ethical and possible in the future, and that you are on the wrong side of history if you, if you think that capitalism and competition and all these things you just talked about are good, and that really the, the best thing is to force people to become some sort of utopian creature that works together in unison and, and everybody is uh, egalitarian and there's no need for feminism and men's rights activists because everybody looks at everyone as an equal. Well, there are two kinds of people who will advocate for equality of outcome. One kind of person who will is confused. They don't understand what happens if you go down this road. And the other one is cynical. And they're using this as an excuse to justify something that just so happens to reward them. We're obviously talking about the fire service here, which I'm, you can, I'm sure, see that I'm very passionate about. But there's something, there's something underlying to this entire conversation. It isn't just about the fire service. It's about devaluing men and this idea that somehow being masculine and doing things, you know, this saying of toxic masculinity. And of course, there is toxic masculinity. I'm not suggesting guys at college getting girls drunk and taking advantage and doing stupid things. That's not cool. I don't approve of that. On the other hand, men have been doing things on this earth for a long period of time and made the world a better place. And we should just as we should admire the abilities of women and moms and daughters and sisters and how fantastic and amazing women uh, contribute to our world. Why are we devaluing what men have done? Um, look, I've just brought up here, this is careers for uh, the workforce. I think this is in the UK. I couldn't find it broken down like this except for here, but let's look at this. Uh, vehicle technicians, mechanics, electricians, less than 1% of, of the workforce are female. Where, where's the... Um, Where's the panic and, and why, why aren't we changing laws? We need more mechanics, more female mechanics, more female electricians. Why, why aren't we screaming for that? We're carpenters, 1%, electricians. There's all these jobs that men have been doing for, for since the beginning of time. Why isn't this, why is, are these certain areas being used to foment animosity between the sexes? I don't understand. OK, because there's, I don't know the exact numbers here, but there may actually be less mechanics than firefighters, females. So why are we starting at the fire service? Why don't we get down to the uh, Jiffy Lube and start pitching a fit that there's more uh, men there than females? This is ridiculous. This is these are just push button issues created to separate us for reasons I don't quite understand. And again, I'm not against females doing any of these jobs. I want a mechanic. I want a mechanic that can fix my car right. I don't care if they're from Mars. I don't care what sex they are or what their sexual orientation is or what their religious views are. But this shit has to stop. I beg us to go back to just respecting one another and going about our lives like we once did. And are like pathetic or need a man or X, Y, Z. It's like, no, baby, back yourself. Yeah, back we, yourself. we do Whatever need you... men though. We do. We don't need them. We then do. No, because they're lesbians. Who do you who do you call to get your car fixed? A man or a woman? Your toilet breaks down. Who do you call? A so man I, or a woman? I fix my own car. I can I can okay. do. I'm who, most who, mechanics. Your power do. your power supply. Who runs it? Who runs the infrastructure of society? Men or women? Oh, at the moment, men obviously because yeah. of so, patriarchy. So we, so, cause, cause of, because oh, of patriarchy. Oh no. Oh, no. But, <laughs> wait, um, wait, do so I need a man? The, the no. This is. I'm obsessed with being what? a woman in a male dominated industry. Okay, I do wait, all of my own carpentry. I do all my own like. Right, but but regardless of that, like you agree that men run the infrastructure, so therefore oh, at the we, moment, we, yeah, men run the world. The, so they we need men. Mm, yeah, we yeah yeah on a on we, a wider scale, yes. yes, on a wider scale, on a personal scale, no, because you don't need a man to provide for you. Right, you can earn right, our own but, wage. But, but, but we need men to run the industries that keep us alive and well. Not necessarily, right. no. So because I know female mechanics, engineers, right, but, carpenters. But, but remember, remember that's exception. Like those industries are like ninety nine percent male. Yeah, but for now. Right. For now, do you and we can change that. We can, with feminism. but do we, we do? We, but do we want to change that? Some women do. Some so women how, don't. How do you know the difference between women picking the industries they want to pick, and 
<laughs> and trying to the, fuck the patriarchy. And, no, no, no. I'm saying like, like, how do you know the difference between women picking the industries they want to pick? So like, I don't know a lot of girls that want to be plumbers, mechanics, engineers, and all that stuff. Me. Right, but you're the exception. You're not the rule. I don't no, know many. No, exactly. That's what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. So, so when you say things like it's because of, but the I'm pa- still valid. But you're still valid. But I'm saying when you say things like because of the patriarchy, that's why women aren't in those fields. How do you know it's the patriarchy and not women choosing what they want to choose? We well, don't, and but that's not my right. business. Right, that's not my business. Yeah, I know. But like, why do you automatically assume patriarchy? I don't know. Automatically assume it, but that's why we need men because of the patriarchy. Right. Because we, they are the ones who, at the moment, control m- most of the world. That's why we right. need. But how, men. how do you know women don't control most of the world because they don't pick the industries where they're like in well, control? That's it. It's not black or white. It's right. that's that like gray area intersection. Right. 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 But I'm saying, like, could it possibly just be like? I don't think there's anything stopping women from getting a job today. I don't think we have anything. I think it's easier for women than men. Yeah. Okay to be a man. It's not okay. It's necessary. What the hell are we gonna do without men? You look around the city here, you see all these buildings go up, these men, they're doing impossible things. They're under the streets, working on the sewers, they're up on the power lines in the storms and the, and the rain. They're keeping this impossible infrastructure functioning, this thing that works in a miraculous manner. They work themselves to death, and often literally, and, and the, the, um, the gratitude for that is sorely lacking, especially among the people who should be most grateful. You see university professors, especially of the social justice bent, who are among the most protected and privileged people that the world has ever produced. They take everything they have for granted, failing to understand entirely that there's a massive infrastructure of unbelievably hardworking, solidly laboring, working class men breaking themselves in half on a regular basis, making sure that everything that always breaks works. And so a little gratitude for that is in order. And it's very useful to tell everyone, not just men, that they have an important role to play, a necessary role, and that if they act properly and honestly and forthrightly, that they can put their lives together and they can help their families and they can make their communities better and that that's not toxic masculinity, that appalling phrase. It's what keeps the world going round. And if we had any sense, we'd understand that instead of doing everything at every possible moment to label what we have in the West as oppressive and patriarchal and, and, and fundamentally predicated on power of all the insane propositions 